Yes, hello there guys, girls, people of the internet and the YouTube gaming community. My name is Beepo Gaming, and today I'm bringing you guys the Assassin's Creed Syndicate How to Fight Like a Victorian Boss from the UB blog. So let's get straight on with the video. So the first one is Concealed Carry. Assassins used to be able to walk the streets bristling with obvious weaponry, but that kind of thing simply doesn't fly in the more gently society of mid-19th century London. The implements of death favoured by Jacob and Evie Fry are built with concealability in mind. The cane swords are secret weapons by definition, and they have back an extra hidden blade in the shaft. Because this is Assassin's Creed, while their revolvers and curry knives have the potential to deal immense damage despite their compact size. The centerpiece of Jacob's arsenal in the Ethi demo, however, is a simple pair of brass knuckles, and where hand to hand fighting in previous Assassin's Creed was a far pacifistic for players to leave enemies alive, here are well here a no. Here a few well placed combos are more than enough to kill them dead. Okay. Largely because Jacob likes to mix hidden blade strikes in with his punches. Jacob's a pretty quick boxer too. Getting into the scraps feels like a faster version of the swordplay in Assassin's Creed Unity. With Jacob able to bust out a punch flurries and dodges rather than parry, his enemies knife strikes with a quick tap of a button. Now, the team worked really hard on having a visceral hand-to-hand, -hand, very close combat that demonstrates the brutality of the period, says Francois Pellin, senior producer. When you're in a face of a rival gang, you want the player to feel like they're more in control, and that they are really powerful within the kind of fight. It's within those guidelines that we developed the fighting system. Set them up, knock them down. As good as fighting feels, there's a certifying depth to it as well. The stun move from earlier game is back. And while it's still great for stopping your opponents from blocking, it also gives you an opening to safely turn away and weaken their friends for a few crucial seconds. That's important because getting two or more Templars near the point of death lets you unleash a cinematic multi-kill finisher that cuts down both at once. Setting up multi-kills takes a little practice. When you see Jacob shyly lank an enemy's head forward, staggering them, that's your signal that they are at your mercy, even if they snap out of it and start shuffling randomly toward you. The hard the hard part is then getting back away to focus on another enemy, but if you can deny your killer instinct and long enough to two or more near death enemies close together, being able to deliver a several final blows at once is fun to watch. Now of course, if you don't have that kind of restraint, you'll still be able to get a lot of elaborate executions. Simply raining an enemy until they are dead will produce a handful of these. Jacob might snap an arm before stabbing his enemy in the throat, for example or bash their heads to the ground and extend his hidden blade in one motion. But if you experiment, you'll uncover more. Approaching a staggering enemy from behind, for example, kills differently than an approach from the front. You can also lure enemies near a wall, at which point you can break their limbs against it and smash their face first into the bricks. And if you're near an open hazard like a ledge or a furnace, you could kick them towards it and let the environment do the rest. But if you're impatient, you can simply end a combo with a gunshot or a throwing knife to send your enemy sprawling to the cobblestones. They don't even need to be on the ropes for that to work, although using Jacob's revolver for an execution is much more dramatic than shooting a thug who's still got some fight left in him. You're not safe from finishes yourself though. If you run out of medicine and let some 10 plus dudes get the best of you, you might have to watch them plunge a knife into the top of Jacob's skull, or pick him up by the throat and cleaver chop him in the ribs until he stops struggling. And if one of London's police officers should climb, should club you over the head a few too many times, then you'll actually drag Jacob's prone away from, prone from away from up by an arm, presumably to face arrest and imprisonment. Now, last but not least, vehicular manslaughter. London's carriages, omnibuses, and handsome cabs are another big part of the demo. They're everywhere. They're easy to steal, and the demo's climax involves a lengthy chase at the reins of one of them. Carriages aren't just in, just standings for. Uh, are just standards for cars, though. They have a distinctly rickety rate and feel, and they're surprisingly useful in a fight. Templars on foot can simply be run over, for example, while you can use Jacob's ram to shove any pursuers into the wall. What makes the vehicles especially interesting, however, is that they're moving platforms from hand to hand battles. An assassin is someone who can jump on anything, they can climb everything, and they can fight everywhere, says Pelland. Because most carriages have a hard top, we thought it would be maiden to go from one hard top to another, just navigating. And if the player can do that, why not NPCs or enemies? If you're driving, you can go on the top of a vehicle, you can fight there, you can jump from one vehicle to another. It was a true innovation breakthrough for the team to make it work, 
to make it fluid, simple and rewarding. Fighting on top of carriages isn't isn't that different from fighting on the ground. You have access to Jacob's full range of weaponry, and you're able to do the same moves even though you're brawling in a tight space. Booting defaulted foes into traffic and taking their place in the driver's seat is uniquely satisfying though, especially if their ride isn't as banged up as the one you just abandoned. If the fight isn't going your way, you can, temporarily escape, you can temporarily escape by jumping down the street as your confused enemies speed away, but if you find surviving in a carriage tough, you may want to bring some friends along. One thing that, that's pretty cool is that you can hire friendly gang members, says Poland. They will join you on your cart, but if there's too many, there's still another cart and they will follow you. So if you do that, you can easily think, I'm hiring allied guards and I can go attack that stronghold. And the resolution of how I capture the stronghold is going to be very different if I did, I did like that. It's a very powerful and creative tool that the player has to resolve conflicts and puzzles. So guys, that was the Ubisoft blog and how to fight like a Victorian boss. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, click the like button. Subscribe if you're not ready for the latest and greatest information on Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Bye for now, and have a great day.